it's Hot Topic, Hot Tweets, and as spicy as me, I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Lisa Dwan. Producer Tyler has two minutes on the board and topics at the bottom of your screen. Mm -hmm. One of us may get out of line or just need to shut up for about 30 seconds, and that's when this trusty mute button comes into play. Uh-huh, of course we love it when Chet called us out, so don't be shy, we can take it. Let's get to our first story here. We're going to kick it off with one of the biggest stories before the weekend by finding out just how much money streamers can make on Twitch. Hmm. My, are your ears percolating? During this latest broadcast, variety streamer Rectful showed viewers just how much money he could earn via Twitch's bounty board. If he streamed an hour of League of Legends, he would be paid over 8,000 US dollars. Another two offers would give him 4,000 just by watching a Street Fighter League or playing Final Fantasy XIV on his channel. Rectful pointed out that you don't need a manager or pre-existing sponsorship to take a bounty. All you have to do is accept and start streaming. First off, uh, that seems like a lot of cashish. Uh, and secondly, do you think this is the reason why there's so many esports pros who have actually just left the actual professional side of playing esports and just moved to the streaming side? Oh, a hundred percent. Like even before this bounty new thing came into play, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was already more profitable to just stream. Yeah. Pro playing is honestly, I know the people who are really competitive and they want the glory. It's not about the money. It's, uh, oh! It's a new version. It's, it's not, not about, about the money, money. <laughs> for, for, for players. Like they want the glory, they want to just win. But this is a whole different like ball game now. Mm. And uh, I would do a lot more for a lot less. Like what the fact that. Hmm. Uh, the point is, <laughs> I just that's a crazy, crazy amount of money. Yeah. Uh, I want to know so. how much uh, would it take for me to pay you to stream a game to of start, my choosing? First, start doing ASMR, or does it have to be, <laughs> or does it have to be like a specific game? Like it has to be a game to actually make money off of. Like these are bounties that need to actually yeah. come from people. Well, because they have the money to spend. Exactly. But if I have you know a lot of cash here and I want to pay you for ASMR stream, how much will you do it for? Uh, <laughs> one million dollars. Oh, I don't know. ASMR to me still seems very strange and a little makes me feel a little uneasy, like a little weird. I'm not sure what people are doing ways. on the other side of the screen, like listening. You know, I just don't. I don't know. I don't really, really get it. You can't it. control that. That's not the point. It, you don't need to worry about what they're doing on their mm, side. You know, it's I do, more though. about why. I do because. What I do you think they're doing right now while watching this? I uh, hopefully listening attentively and joining us in chat and telling us all the things you that they would one play hand. for money. I do want to know what you guys <laughs> would do, like how much money it would take for you to just drop what you're doing now to actually just stream full time. It is quite difficult though because you have to still build that following. Yeah. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but I get why all these pro yeah. pro athletes, pro e athletes, e gamers, or whatever you want to call them. I don't want to. E athletes, I, get out of here. Just people. Oh, I, everyone I rage muted you there. Everybody has like their whatever their take they want to put on these boys that play games and these ladies that play games professionally. I, I understand why they're dropping off of all that to just stream full time when they already have the audience. They have the dough. Mm -hmm. what they, they're not beholden to anybody but themselves. I mean, it is a hard life though, streaming all the time because you have That's to true. constantly be streaming. So it's just a hard give and take, but it's good money. That's true. It can Guys be. in chat, let us know what your price is because yeah. I want to know. <laughs> Moving on to more money topics. During what was otherwise a routine financial report, mm. yesterday Activision confirmed that it had sold the first five city spots for the upcoming franchise Call of Duty World League. Spots mm -hmm. for Atlanta, Dallas, New York, Paris, and Toronto have all been sold. Yep. Each spot reportedly cost 25 million US dollars, and there's no date announced yet for the start of the league. Mm. So that's mm. a lot of money once again. Uh, but do you think it's a little premature to start announcing like all these spots when we don't even know what the league is? First uh, no, why do you, th well, hello, why do you think they're announcing this right now? Any, any guesses, children? Any guesses as to why this would be announced right now? Uh, money, money. This they're money trying talk. to just put it out there. So there's other investors looking at it too, like what cities are still available, what orgs are still available to partner with. This is all a money play, people. Remember that. Just just look at it this way. I feel like COD, when I, announced, when I tweeted about it yesterday, I had some people saying this is going to be bad for COD. Honestly, and I just responded back like, why? Explain. I don't understand why. Well, because these orgs, because it's going to a city now, right? So yes. they're they're no longer the org. So Optic will still want to be Optic was mm -hmm. the example given to me. I'm like, yeah, but Splice is still Splice and we know that Splice is still Splice and Toronto Defiant still operates as Toronto Defiant. We know that it's co-owned by Splice. Yeah. That will still be the case for all these teams. Optic will still be Optic. We'll know that they're Optic, but they will just have a city attached to them. We'll still all know they're Optic players if they get picked up by a certain city. Does Optic even have an issue with this? Because Optic technically owns the Houston Outlaws, right? Exactly. In Overwatch. So they're cool with the yeah. city-based system, guys. This is just people projecting 
projecting their yeah. own like fears onto, yeah. I guess, this whole league thing. What I find interesting is first, what? like the twenty-five million dollar spot. Mm -hmm. So we know in other leagues, like League of Legends for the NALCS, I believe when they first franchised, it was like ten million buy-in, mm. and then Overwatch now season two, it was between thirty million <laughs> and sixty million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're seeing all these numbers getting thrown around, and COD, I guess, is right in that middle spot. Yeah. Uh, and. What's really interesting is that all the mm. people who so far bought a uh, COD spot, mm. they're involved in Overwatch League as yeah. well, right? Like, 100. I think all five of them. All five of them o are already uh, in Overwatch yeah, League. Yeah, so like, are these Overwatch or I guess teams or orgs just like picking up franchise spots everywhere, maybe because they're leaving Overwatch? Uh, no, <gasps> definitely oh. not. No, that you're just trying to start something that isn't there. No, they're, <laughs> the, what they're doing is they're seeing the money that they're making and seeing all the investors that are coming on board. Think about all the people that have been, all the people that have money, all the companies that have money that have been wanting to invest in esports forever. They're doing it now and they're going to do it because they have these big names already with money asking them to come on board and when you invest money you want to see that other people that are investing have money too so this is just going to be all kinds of dough all around for cod i wish i had that much money ah oh, rip a dip this week immortals raised 30 million <laughs> us dollars in funding that's a lot of money and according to a new report from espn we may know the reason why immortals needs all that cash money apparently immortals is in talks with infinite sports and entertainment who own optic gaming to purchase optics lcs spot Immortals was a member of the LCS before it franchised and their application to join the franchise league was declined due to concerns over the organization's financial state. So, Lisa, hmm, Immortals hmm. coming back to LCS, is that a smart move? I actually have a really embarrassing story to tell about oh, this. Oh, jeez. All right, guys, ready. Story here time go, with Lisa. So last year, I wanted to set up an interview with uh, the Immortals team. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, I didn't, I totally <laughs> forgot that they didn't get into a franchise LCS uh -oh. spot. So last year when I sent an email, I was like, hey, guys, I'm Lisa. Can I interview your League of Legends team? <laughs> that's what she sounds like when she's Yeah, that's, that's my email voice. Yeah. Not remembering that they didn't make franchise. So oh. they didn't have a League of Legends team. Oh. And I emailed Noah. I emailed everyone. I'm like, why didn't they respond? Like, I didn't oh, get it. Shoot. So you guys, when you guys send an email, make sure to do your double uh, check. And, you know. Yeah, she's she's normally a quality producer outside of that That's one mistake. email. Yeah. Mistakes happen. And some others that but I don't want to talk about. But this is obviously a big deal for this org, 100, but maybe for LCS? Oh, okay. So context for yeah. Immortals, when they first entered LCS, they were so much fun to watch. They mm. had like a power team, like Hooney, Rainover, Poe Belter, mm. Wild Turtle, our boy Wild Turtle, yeah. Adrian. They went undefeated for like six weeks in their first season. Mm -hmm. They finished in the top three, like consistently. They were so good. Yeah. So it was so sad to see that they didn't make uh, get the franchise spot. Yeah. So the fact that there's a chance that they might be coming back, Noah, who's the founder, he's really smart. He's mm -hmm. done great things in esports in general with like CSGO as well. Mm -hmm. So like having these people back in L uh, LCS, mm -hmm. fantastic. Also, the fact that they're buying Optic spot, which is probably a good idea because Optic yeah. has been doing Mm, not right. that good. Right, but then so. there's the concern of also not doing well, right? Because yes. they raise this money and they're getting this spot, they're going to buy this spot, but then that means they have to show up. Like, they've also got to make their investors happy, and that's going to be well, a, that's a what tough I'm saying. thing to Noah's do. Noah's really smart with this. I think he's good at creating mm. a successful team. So it's mm. better that they are in the scene than Optic, who have been struggling, yeah. pulling, like, seventh place, like, two seasons in a row. You know, it's yeah, time yeah. to take, let's get yeah. some other talents and better okay. orgs in here. All right? Okay, fair. So I think it's a good idea, guys. Lisa's right. available as jungler. I, uh, no, I can't play jungle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> earlier this week, the first trailer for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie was released, and the internet responded with a mix of horror, confusion, and plenty of human teeth frowns. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction to Sonic's design in particular was really negative. Uh, as a result, the film's director, Jeff Fowler, said that Sonic's design will be changed in response to the criticism. But there's just one problem. Okay. The movie comes out in six months, which means that either it's too late to change anything, or that there's going to be a lot of visual effects artists that are going to have to like work overtime mm -hmm. for half a year. Yeah. So, um, Marissa, do you think it's a good call for, I guess, Jeff to come out and be like, you know what, we're going to change everything now. Okay, um, should we do conspiracy theory time? Yes. Because uh, Jordan, one of our lovely camera operators who's in the room right now, he's like, do you guys think that uh, maybe they had this plan the whole time and they already had their Sonic lined up, but <gasps> then they just put this other one out there because they knew everyone would be mad, and then everyone's talking about it now, and now we kind of like, we're all excited about what's going to happen next. Mm. Could be, possibly, you never know these kind of tactics and marketing schemes that come into play now with all these things, right? Because yeah. they're trying to get everyone's attention. So what better way to get everyone's attention than to piss them off? There's 
there's that line, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in that? I don't know. Like, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to say because, like, just looking at Sonic and the way he was, I understand why they maybe created him in that way because they wanted to attract children to the to the movies. That and thing is repelling and, children. I, as a, I as a child, I would not want to come close to that thing. But we don't know, right? Because <laughs> maybe if, if no one has ever grown up with Sonic and they don't actually know that he has more of a, like, a kind of a mean look to him. Like, he has always a, like, a sly look on his face and he's got these, like, eyebrows, like, this, these eyes that go back, right? Yeah. And he also doesn't have human freaking teeth. I think that was, like, the main issue with it. Um, I heard people talking on, like, daytime talk shows, like, people that don't play video games at all talking about it because everybody's, yeah. I'm telling you, everybody's talking about this yeah. right now, which is good for them. 100% great meme. A great yeah. meme came out of this. Uh, I think the, also the issue was, like, the body ratio. They made him yes. look so human. Like, he had a human torso, yes. legs. And then I saw someone actually created online, like, a new version. Like, someone actually created their own version of him, which and he looks looked so much better. That yeah. looked real to the character's design. Yeah. You know, the legs are extra long because that's his character. Yeah. Fuzzy body, whatever. Like, stick true to the yeah. original source, guys. For and sure. But people, I guess, saw on anything. Like, he was even sitting in the car in that one point in the trailer, and people were like, why is he in a car when he can run? It's like, <laughs> it's maybe not he doesn't awesome want to run, guys. It's like, yeah, like, why can't he, he just sit for a minute? He has hands. He can drive. Gosh, people are so stop. annoying sometimes. Yeah. Mm. All right. Now it's time to check out what the streamers have been up to on Clip It. Mm. Yesterday at the PUBG Europe League Kickoff Cup, viewers were treated with a surprise when Pro A Beautiful Death proposed to his semi-pro oh. girlfriend, Rita. Let's take a look. Anything else? Um, actually, I want to say one more thing um, to Rita. I don't think she's going to uh, need a translating for what I'm going to say. I hope she understands. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> that was so... Okay, Marissa. No. What do you feel? How do you feel about public uh, I, proposals? Listen, like I love love. I love when people are in love. I love when, you know, people can show off their love in a way like this. But I straight up told my husband, like, before, obviously, we got married, if he ever proposed to me in public in such a way, I would just walk away. Because, one, I love when there's proposals, like, publicly, and the girl says no. <laughs> I think they're well, so freaking funny. Like, if you just watch a compilation. Music, guys. What? Uh, no, just <laughs> We didn't play anything like that. No, uh, I don't. Like, I, they're kind of cringe. Like, I hate seeing proposals at baseball games or, like, sporting events. I just think, like, they're so played. But we've never seen anything like this before on an eSports stage, so that's really cute. To that caliber. I wish them to well. that caliber. Yeah, no, I'm excited for them and their love. Like, it's super sweet. Just for me, like, personally, like, I just don't, I wouldn't want that for myself. But as long as she's cool with it's it, that's fine. It's a little cheesy. But I think she was really in, like, she was in on that because she didn't seem surprised. And it was kind of, like, yeah. very quiet. Like, there was no reaction from her at all. Right. Yeah, but I mean, because it, it is, again, you're on the spot. It's like, what are you... Like, yeah, you got to pressure like, people into marrying then, you. And then you feel bad because the person you love is on their knees in front of you, in front of all these people. Like, uh, okay, like, just get up. I love you too, and let's get this over with. If you're um, going to do a public proposal, you got to be confident that she's going to say yes. That's no, just no, the don't. Line I want there. if you're gonna be public. No, I like more public proposals of when people are recording and you're not sure if he's gonna say yes. That's Do it like then, because the that's good content. Oh my god! Think about the content, Lisa. Our next clip comes from official Andy Pyro, who is streaming while driving and experiences even more dangerous behavior from a fan. I'm at the party on a truck night with a punk mic with a ton of people. <laughs> sorry that he ain't got it like I be cause he's sloppy, not me cause we rocks me spot free. <laughs> All right, children, do not stream, snipe, and drive, okay? That is super dangerous. It looked like it was the roads were wet there, too. Like, uh-uh, yeah. that's not cool. Yeah, that was a... Uh... Kind of, that was pretty dangerous. So I mean, dangerous. I know they're, that's probably uh, against 
the law to stream because that's distracted driving. If I can't yeah. even eat a sandwich or drink my coffee technically yeah. while driving, that's definitely illegal. I know. Um, We've had a couple clips now where people are like streaming what they do with the IRL streams while yeah. driving. Obviously, I really salted on the other guy um, the other day, you but uh, yeah. But <laughs> I just don't think like it's fine. They need content. They also need to live their lives, and maybe he's going somewhere and doing something. Or is that like also content? Like just be in my car. Like let me sing to this music, and you're just with me now. I don't know. I'm I feel like that. you would do that. Okay. You would do that. Literally, if you guys follow us on social media, literally just the other day yeah. after work, I went into my car yeah. and I started jamming to some like really embarrassing tunes. I'm like, this would be kind of funny to post. So yeah. I was like going at it, and then I look over behind me and I see Tyler in his car just watching me, and I was just like, I froze in my spot. I'm just like, oh my god. And this is why you shouldn't stream in real life because this is yeah. freaking embarrassing. Yeah. And you should always check your surroundings. Uh, yeah. And it kind of looked like he live. had a Twitch chat going as well. Like he like had yeah. some kind of screen with a chat yeah, going yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. That's you. Know, that's sort of dangerous. But Although Andy Pyro. What are the chances that you're literally just streaming and a viewer yeah. pulls up beside you watching you while they're driving while you're driving? That's just inception no, streaming. No, yeah, I don't like that. Just don't stream, snipe, yeah. and, and drive. Just safety first. Safety first. Because then, uh, then if something bad happens, it's caught on camera. And you and go to just jail. Content. You go to jail, that's but it's just good content, content for us. We'll sip the tea. It's really <laughs> the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. And just love reading tweets that contain little real talk about life, you know, and uh, of course food. Hearthstone and offline TV cast made disguised toast. Well, he's got us. He says, I stopped using Uber Eats since my delivery drivers kept stealing my food. Now I'm watching my Postmates courier drive away with my Chipotle. It's a sign to stop ordering food and learn how to cook. I even got extra guacamole. Right? Because he's cooking at home so he can make all the guacamole he wants and doesn't have to pay for it. Well, not pay extra for it. He still paid for the avocados. Uh, there's so uh, so many questions with this. What? First of all, first of all, what? Uh, you know the saying, if the stink, was it the stink follows you, then you should probably check your own like foot. You know what I mean? Yo, never heard that before. <laughs> I just that made up frankly something. No, it's up. like if he keeps getting his food stolen, first of all, yeah. then uh, maybe he's just not like, you know, opening the door fast enough. What? And they're, they're not like, ha first of all, no Uber driver's gonna try to steal your food. Then you literally have their car, they have you have their name, you yeah. have everything. Like, they're no. not trying to rob you, they're not gonna get away with this. No, Lisa, they do get away with it though. No, they because don't. they could say, they could say they came to the door, they knocked, nobody answers. Like there's all kinds of excuses they can make. Uber drivers also, you know, could just go in and like steal a couple fries too that you ordered from wherever the hell. You it, it does happen. Why would it you does tell happen. me this? I order all the time. Exactly. No, listen, I do too, and we have to just be a little more careful. And also he's right, like we should definitely cook for ourselves. We should go grocery shopping and cook. Think of all the money we spend okay, on these mom. delivery services. Okay, Seriously. mom. This is enough. I get I, this enough from everyone, including Nick in the yeah. back and everyone, the producers. Okay, oh my God, Nick, actually, Nick full on is the worst. If I walk in with just <laughs> Starbucks in the morning, he's like, Marissa, you know how much that costs? Yeah. You know how much you're spending? Like, I monthly? know. He's like paying get for breakfast. Get off the back, guys. I, I don't want to cook. Okay, leave me with my instant noodle cup. <laughs> all right. The next one comes right from the NBA 2K stage. Commentator Jeff Eisenband tweets, Jeff, can they get someone to guard me? <laughs> Mama, I'm that man literally talking to me while Blazers Gaming blows out Nick's Gaming. Great cameo, by the way, from One Wild, one wild Walnut. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I love his name. Jeff, Jeff, can they get someone to guard me? Get somebody to guard me. Hey, go, man. Hey, I feel bad, baby. <laughs> that subtle look that yeah. Walnut gave Jess, uh, Jess yeah, yeah. was priceless. That's yeah, honestly look so back good. A little, uh. Okay, so uh, that was some pretty savage trash talk. It was, yeah. Uh, how are you feeling about that one? Uh, no, I do. Listen, I love all kinds of trash talk, especially when it's like not too mean, yeah. right? We got to keep it. Just, just don't use anything derogatory. Don't insult anyone's race, yeah, uh, yeah, any yeah. of that kind of stuff, because that's where we go wrong. But any kind of trash talk that sets somebody off their game. Always works, yeah. especially now because we're going to talk gears later, of course, uh, with Zurich in Esports and 30. There's uh -huh. always trash talk there, but in NBA 2K League, they have it as well, and it does add to this the overall vibe of the experience. And I think we need more of that. We so need good. more of it in NBA 2K. So League. good. What? So seeing Walnut's reaction made me think, like, did he think his teammate went too far with that? Because oh. he kind of did the oh, should I uh, like, stop? Nervous. Uh, Do you think as a teammate, maybe we have kind of the obligation? Like, if you pop off too hard, it's my job to be like, yo, Marissa, chill. No, like no, because no, because I like like if you were to pop off, I would do the same thing. Like I would let you have your moment, right? Yeah. And I kind of just I also give you have to give like a little gym look to the camera, like office gym look that? to the camera. For sure, yeah, always. You always gotta give a little look like I'm in on this or I'm not, but like let people know without saying words. So I thought that was perfect. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah our last profound fun. thought comes from G2 Esports and its CEO Ocelot, who took to Twitter to offer some simple.
simple advice. How to succeed in esports? One, buy the G2 MSI icon. Two, win everything. Three, eat cake. Four, keep away from Carlos's cake. Buy yours today in a League of Legends shop. Okay, Lisa, I'm lost. Can you explain? Uh, when you win as much as G2, you don't have to make sense oh. at all. Uh, that was an interesting marketing strat by G2 to sell MSI icons. Okay. Uh, I don't know how effective okay. it was. It did make me think. That's all it was for? It was icons? Yes. Well, that's how they get their money. Okay. Come on. That's how, like, the little in-game stuff you gotta buy, microtransactions. You know how it is. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so you're not impressed with their marketing strategy. So no. who impresses you in terms buy. of esports teams? Uh, recently, it's been a lot from the Overwatch League, especially Dallas Fuel. Uh, I just love their little cartoons. Like, how how adorable. It's little cartoons where they definitely play into their sponsorship. I think it's Jack in the Box. We don't have it in Canada, but um, just, like, the big guy with the white, <laughs> white head, cone hat. It just like he's a part of their the skits, right? Yeah. Which makes it so fun. I just feel like they're really placating to their audience, but also to their sponsors. Like it's kind of perfect. Just yeah. to make that dough. That's true. My my favorite, I think, is 100 Thieves. If you see any of oh. their commercials, especially for the Call of Duty team, they are so good at making funny skits and getting yeah. the whole team in on it. They're like acting. They're like wannabe actors. I guess. Yeah. And it freaking kills. It's but so it, good. Yeah. But if you're talking uh, um, Call of Duty, I feel like E United still has the best social media presence and their way of marketing their team. They're still number Community one to be in really good. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, true, we need true. to move on because uh, if you like fire, let's keep it going with some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the creative, funny, or dank things the community has been making or sharing. So, we're here at Squeeze Carrot Squad Love a Good Mod. So, courtesy of Zuli the Witch, let me introduce you to Shrek Hero. <laughs> Shrek Hero. And I saw her face. <laughs> What? Okay, so yeah, obviously that was Sekiro. So many modded Shrek obviously. to appear in the game as one of the big bosses. <laughs> that was Pretty terrifying. Frightening. Yeah, that was so scary. I can't. Yeah, I was not. I was not anticipating that at all. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like some people don't know, but like some we don't actually know what we're gonna see before we see. So it's like a very visceral reaction. <laughs> but, like why? Shrek? Okay, no, it works. Yeah. I'm into it. So which game would you like to kind of see Shrek make an appearance <laughs> in? Now that's the big question. Uh, well, I'm playing Pokemon right now, so oh. imagine if I was like going through the bush all of a sudden, bam, a wild Shrek appears. Uh, that would terrify me, first of all. But it's okay because I start with a fire type and. Oh, are scared of fire, right? Uh, smart. Ah! smart. Okay. I'm a really good like Pokemon it. trainer, guys. Okay, nobody asked you about that. Well, oh. Just move on. <laughs> you did ask me. <laughs> All right, moving on. Here's a clip that may interest those who are into video game development, posted by Fisco onto Reddit. Here's something you may not have realized while playing an open world game. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. You see uh, that? So as you can see, uh, as the character moves around, only yeah. the world in front of them, like in front of the player's perspective, appears. So this is a concept called occlusion culling, which is a feature that disables rendering of objects when they're huh. not currently seen by the camera. Oh. So you think the world exists, yeah. the whole world exists while you're playing the game, but no, they it just literally it. build the world as you're walking through it. Yo, that's cool. Which is brilliant, right? That's probably some people don't really think about that stuff. I mean, I definitely didn't. You guys, you can learn something on the show too. I love that we <laughs> Teach. Right? I love learning. It's right? great to learn because knowledge is power. Listen, uh, moving on to our very last post, we have to talk about a new phenomenon. Hey, remember Bowsette? Well, move over because there's a new lady in town. It's not me. Let me introduce you to Bowsette. Oh, Look at this. Fair lady. Okay, you know what? She looks pretty good. Also dubbed as Queen Bowsette. This was created by Doki Nana on Twitter and is just one of the many pieces of art based off of Luigi's Mansion character, King Boo, and that was created uh, by the community. So, That's really I good. mean, I just love the creativity of these communities. Like, you can get into a deep well of things if you find them on Reddit, Tumblr, like all that stuff. I just yeah. love how there's so many different ranges of things from like really gross looking ones, like the ones that Brody always shows, to like the super cute, friendly family versions, especially with the Boozette because um, there's some NSFW. 
CW stuff. Yeah, uh, I was well. kind of curious about this, so I Googled it. Oh, which no, might you did be a not. mistake at work. <laughs> what? Should have known. Uh, someone what? actually, I saw this picture. Someone actually took a very graphic image of Queen Bousset and put it on his car. So, oh. like, the graphic is printed on his car. So, he's like rolling up to Costco or wherever he grocery shops with a very revealing Queen Bousset on his car. Okay, first of all, a guy with Queen Bousset on his car is not shopping at Costco. Okay, that's for families. He's shopping somewhere else. Okay? That's right. Leaving you guys on that note, yes. that's it for Unmuted. Remember that you can always hit us up on our socials just to say hi or send us things to react to. Someone right now type in exclamation mark socials in chat so you can see all our channels. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you next week.